everybody. We are back today talking Doctor Who. This is very exciting. And we haven't been able to do this for I don't know how long. It's been a while since we've last talked Doctor Who. But what we do on this show is we discuss Doctor Who from one person who is newer to the franchise to the uh, our my guest who is the expert on the franchise <laughs> and so jonathan north is here thank you so much jonathan for coming on hey thanks for having me yeah how are you doing pretty good yeah it's you so made it long. through i know you made it through 2020 yeah Whew. <laughs> I don't think we had any idea what was coming when we last recorded this show. I know. I was just going to look up when that was. Uh, it feels like it was like in high school. It feels so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Uh, it was, it was a whole see. pandemic ago. I know. <laughs> it was last time was in March. So you literally. <laughs> yeah, really. It was probably like right before things started happening. <laughs> yeah. March 5th. Oh my gosh. Wow. So we got a New Year special and there was some worry about whether we would get anything at all from them. And they said they, they, they had announced a, no Christmas special, but mm-hmm. then we found out we got the New Year's special. And uh, both of us, me especially, were not that high on the finale, mm-hmm. uh, The Timeless Child. Uh, thought it was pretty poorly done. And so I was thinking, what are they going to do to make this a satisfying special? And how do you think overall that they did with the revolution of the Daleks? I like this way better than <laughs> most of what we got last season. <laughs> yeah. I there, there, agree. There stuff last season that I did really like, but overall, especially after the finale, I don't know. I guess I don't have the last season in the highest regard just because I was so convoluted. <laughs> yeah. And that's well, coming and from were... someone who likes some sometimes more convoluted things. Like I like figuring things out, but like it was convoluted in such a way that I might just give up trying to figure out Doctor Who's backstory. <laughs> yeah, and there were a lot of parts that weren't very satisfying, like the relationship between the her and the companions, the the behavior of the Doctor, uh, the 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 really overt messaging. There's just things like that 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 were frustrating. Mm. I think. And so yeah, it's you're kind of going to this with with maybe lowered a little bit lowered expectations, but I enjoyed it as well. I thought that it was fun in a way that I don't think last season was. I I think I agree. Like I, there were a couple episodes where I did definitely have fun last season, but this feels more like a return to form. Whereas a lot of last season, I just wasn't a huge fan of the writing. Mm -hmm. And I was nervous when I saw that Jack Robertson was back. I was like, Oh no, I did not know he he was was back when he popped up on the screen. I was like, what, why are they bringing back the horrible Spider-Man? Yeah, that we all ate it. Everyone. He it was, was so cringy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, oh no. And <laughs> I I just I thought, did they do this cuz they either thought that Trump would win or thought that Trump would lose or something, you know, was this was it obviously intended to be some kind of commentary on the election, but uh <laughs> I I was not a fan of him previously, and I still, to be honest, wasn't that big a fan of him here. Yeah. He just, he's just, I don't know, not he's, he's very too much interesting. Of a caricature. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't feel like a real person. He feels like a caricature of a person. Right. Yeah. No, I agree completely. And I think that's maybe what's going to be hard is, is people are trying to make. Uh, make villains out of Trump 
the not to get into politics too much but i think he's just such a biz, such a unique i guess to say nice he's such a unique <laughs> character that i just don't think he translates that well to film <laughs> i i never really thought about it but yeah if you kind of if you were to write somebody that behaves exactly like him he doesn't seem real <laughs> right that's what i say yeah yeah <laughs> I never really gave that much thought before, but you're right. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's the world that we're living in, though. In reality, that's scary. But they, they have that saying, truth is stranger than fiction. So yeah, maybe that's, that's why here. True. That's very true. I was excited to see uh, to see Harriet Walker in this. I wish she'd gotten a little bit more to do. She is playing, she starts out as the treasury secretary who's working with Patterson to, uh, I mean, with, um, with Robertson, with Jack to, uh, in their schemes and, uh, but Harry Walker, she's such a good actress and she's so good at playing like deliciously kind of evil characters. (laughs) I was really (laughs) hoping she was going to end up becoming a recurring character because she seemed to be filling in at like not the same gap but like the harriet jones character which you saw in season one we still need to move on to season two where her character changes in season two and i was really hoping she was going to kind of become a similar character but maybe like an evil twist on that and then by the end uh, the hopes for that were dashed but (laughs) I, that's what I was really hoping they were going for because I liked her as a character. She was way do. better as a believable villain than the spider guy. Yeah, agreed. I know, me too. I was kind of hoping that we'd get her as our our lead villain character mm-hmm. as opposed to a uh, fake Trump guy. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, she's great. I mean, even in in Sense Sensibility, she's so good. The the very first <laughs> the opening sequence when she convinces uh, her husband to not give the uh, the the Dashwoods any money at all, and she he goes from he's going to give him like I don't know fifty thousand crowns or whatever whatever it is, I don't know in the old money, but uh, he's going to give him like a sizable amount. By the end, he's like. <laughs> She has him convinced that I, I don't think that your father meant to give him give any actual money, but it, but uh, but encouragement in other ways and stuff like that. <laughs> it's 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 really good, and she's just great at playing those kinds of characters. So she starts out as the treasury sector secretary. She ends up as a prime minister, and uh, and somebody was saying online that that the prime ministers lately have not been lasting long on doctor who <laughs> that's true <laughs> well, she, did, she lasted a shorter time than most i guess yeah but it was it wasn't um stephen fry wasn't he prime minister in his um i thought he was episode? in charge of some secret government thing i don't remember i remember sure. I, I remember he was in charge of something i didn't think he was prime minister i thought he was like some secretive thing. I'd have to rewatch it. Yeah, I can't remember. I don't want to do that. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're right. The Minister of Chance. You're right. I got got that confused. Uh, <laughs> but... I wouldn't remember that title. That's too bizarre. I do not remember that at all. From uh, from uh, the good thing for Wikipedia, but. <laughs> Anyway, so but one thing that was interesting about this special is that it not only was a sequel to the finale, but it was also a sequel to last year's special resolution. Uh, what did you think about that? How they tied that in? I I liked it. I I didn't think it was like too tied in, but like kind of nod to it more, I guess. I don't, it wasn't like direct was or was the beginning it's been too long since i've seen it was the beginning a scene from that i don't it, remember 
<laughs> um, so the at the beginning you have um do 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 oh gosh I me mean, um because they defeated the Dalek in the special, but I I guess I wasn't th- it, if this is the same one that didn't occur to me while I was watching it, but it's been a quite a while since I've seen that episode, so I don't remember. Yeah, so they're yeah, so the you have uh, the basically is the the end of the Daleks in resolution feeds into the beginning of this episode. Okay. Yeah. I, I it's been a while since I've seen resolutions as well. So but but yeah, but it followed that and uh and you have Harry Walker as the Secretary of Treasury and you have this doctor named Leo Rugazi and <laughs> this is gonna sound terrible, but he as soon as I saw he's basically a black scientist, it's like, oh, he's gonna be goner, you know, that he's <laughs> always these kind of things whether it's jurassic park or whatever it might be they, they always kill kill off the black scientist which is terrible but I, I i knew it wasn't long for the for this world unfortunately and i was correct and <laughs> the I doctor I that i thought i thought maybe they were going to set him up as a, another recurring character because uh, he seemed like somebody who would make a good recurring character but no, he's no. he didn't make it through the episode. No, you knew that wasn't going to happen. Uh, but um, so so then we have the doctor is in prison, and uh, this this is from the end of the last episode, and none of the companions have seen her for. Uh, for I think it's about ten months in mm-hmm. their time, but yeah. it's a lot longer than that in the doctor's time. Yeah, there was one scene where we talked about decades. I think that she was in prison. I'm pretty sure there was a line about her being in there for decades. Yeah, and one of the things that we'd kind of complained with is that we hadn't been able to get uh, to know our companions kind of well enough, and that they. The, their re- interactions with the doctor just weren't very satisfying. Um, so this was interesting in this one where you have uh, them, you have Ryan and Graham trying to kind of figure out what's, what's going on with the doctor. But then you have Yaz who is literally like one of those conspiracy theorists with the dartboards and the other things. She isn't sleeping. She's trying to find, find the doctor and uh, what do, what do you think about that? Um, I don't really know because, like you said, we haven't gotten to know them quite enough. So it seemed it couldn't it didn't seem out of character, but it didn't seem in character because we don't know her enough to know how obsessive she might be about something like that. So mm-hmm. it seemed kind of weird, but I just went with it because. Yeah. Well, we don't really know her too much. Well, it was interesting because it felt like are they going to tell this story of how the companions can kind of defeat this Jack guy without the doctors without the doctor? Uh it almost felt that way for a second and like how that long are they going to a really interesting episode. That would have been really great for character development too. Mm-hmm. I know. And so you have this, you have Jack that he decides <laughs> to, there's two different kinds of D- Daleks. Well, he creates his own Dalek, right? And, uh, and he basically he, uses the shell of the Dalek that was killed at the beginning to reverse engineer his own version. And it doesn't right. have, it doesn't have the creature, the Dalek, inside. It's just the tank that the creature drives around, but he's turned it into a drone instead. Yeah, and I mean, 
<laughs> this is just the worst idea that you could ever have. I mean, what is he thinking? It was like a cartoon villain's plan. It was, it was yeah. kind of dumb. Yeah, that's what he said in my little review. I said that most of the stuff with the Daleks was kind of dumb, but it was still fun mm-hmm. and <laughs> to do. And uh, then you have joe patterson the harry walker character she's running for prime minister and she orders more of these kind of fake daleks Mm -hmm. and uh and so then you have the three of three companions confronting jack but he he overpowers them and uh and that's when we get uh that's when we get Jack Harkness. Well, in scene. he's in prison with the doctor. And that got confusing for me trying to write my notes. There's two Jacks in this episode. I know. The spider guy and then Jack Harkness. So I just started writing down Jack and Spider Jack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he's in the prison with the doctor and uh he and they're not the only ones in this prison too we should mention that there was a lot of cameos from past villains from the show i'm sure you probably didn't recognize a lot of them because you haven't seen as many episodes as i have but i noticed quite a few the Mm -hmm. the one if you look close there was one i think you or two you would recognize there was a scorpion thing i can't remember what the name of it was but it was seen in one of the wide shots and then the pating the little creature that would eat anything that was in there. And she talked to it briefly. And then there was a weeping angel and an Ood and a Sycorax who both seemed to be possessed because the Ood in their first appearance, they were only evil because they were literally possessed by Satan <laughs> and the Sycorax. It was never possessed, but they both had the glowing red eyes. So I don't really know what was going on there. I think it was meant to be as like a cameo. I don't think we're supposed to read too much into it, but it, I would have liked a bit more explanation as to why they were possessed together there. And then there was a silent that she talked to briefly as well. So I, I liked that they put all these different past villains in this prison with her. It was kind of a clever little yeah, that's funny. In the previous episodes. Yeah. And as they are producing all of these uh these Daleks. Uh the the scientist Leo Rugazi, he finds cells of the Daleks and mm-hmm. he starts to clone them, which is another like face palm. What are you doing? <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> and and he's told to incinerate the creature, but he, before he does it pounces on him which felt very almost like alien to me uh, the like the alien mm-hmm. franchise you know with the face yeah. face grabbing and everything and uh it takes control of him and uh and so he's he's now the uh i am dalek <laughs> mm-hmm. okay. so that's the end of poor leo and uh, so then they end up in Osaka in Japan. Uh, and you've got this whole facility of cloned Daleks. And now they're about, they're going to be taking over, but there's the like real Daleks and there's the, there's the other doll. There's like two Daleks in this, uh, in this de- There's death squad Daleks and reg and like, pure daleks <laughs> in this version of the story and uh, so so jack uh, he you'll have to elaborate a little bit more on these so he uses a temporal freezing gateway dis- 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 disinhibitor bubble to take them to the vortex manipulator uh, that he had hid in another cell And through all of these shenanigans, he's able to get the doctor to the TARDIS. (laughs) 
does, does that, does I didn't that even mean? bother writing down the convoluted name they gave to the ball thing. I, it, was just, it was just a thing that he used to break her out of prison. The vortex manipulator is something that's been in the show before. That's his main method of time travel. So uh-huh. that, that's what he's used in previous episodes to get around. So, yeah, I don't know what the ball thing's name was. I didn't bother writing it down. It was very convoluted. It was just a a nice little, I guess, deus ex machina to get them out of the prison. <laughs> like, oh, here we have this thing. It'll help us escape. And they escape. <laughs> Yeah. So the three companions are there and uh, they ha- they try to confront Jack and he overpowers them. You have this whole debate between Ryan and Graham about the Daleks and basically then Yaz tells them to shut up. <laughs> Stop. Stop arguing. And I, yeah, that was kind of fun. Um, again, I liked this idea of the of the um doctor uh not being with the with the companions for a little bit getting to know them a little bit of course it's kind of their the last time together but still it was fun and so then you end up with it that we find out do we know that jack is immortal do we know that always yes. or okay that's, that's ever since the end of season one which you you I don't know how much it would have stuck with you, but he was killed at the end of season one, but was immediately brought back to life by Rose. And ever since then, he's been immortal. He's been unable to die. Yeah. So the doctor shows up and the, you can see the, the companions are a little bit, I don't know, a little bit confused. Don't know what to kind of think about it. Of course, Yaz is, is very relieved, but I don't know. They they feel like they have a little bit of mixed feelings. Would you agree? About with the doctor? Yes, for sure. Um, well, yeah, they all kind of do in their own way for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I wasn't quite sure what to make of that because we didn't really see their time without the doctor. So apparently they've had all of this time to think, all this I guess character growth that we never saw. So Ryan is now very distant because he's made his own life while the doctor's been gone. And Yaz is just kind of doctor obsessed right now because Mm -hmm. she couldn't get along without her. Yeah. She's so dependent upon the doctor. And I was, I was listening to some different analysis and they were saying that, that they've had that interesting kind of dynamic with, with the companion sometimes being kind of dependent upon the the doctor in a way that they get so uh, used to her i don't know what do you think how do you think of that that dynamic usually kind of plays out that has happened before um with rose i don't want to give too much away because they ended it in a way that it made sense for her with martha it ended at that point because Martha was in love with the doctor and the doctor was not in love with her and she walked away from, from him. Uh And after that, we haven't had too much uh, companion obsession with the doctor in that way. We had other people who were more friends. There was a little bit with Amy at the beginning, but then Amy gets married Uh and, and they're a married couple traveling with the doctor. So I don't think we've had this exact type of thing since maybe Martha. And I don't know if they're going to go in the same direction as with Martha, because with Martha, it was unreciprocated love. She loved the doctor. The doctor had no interest in her in that way. He just saw her as a friend and she left. I don't know if that's where they'll end up this or not but i guess we'll find out yeah Hopefully they make it more original and have her be her own person i guess rather than just another martha yeah one thing i read they said chibnall's scripts just don't seem to have russell t davies knack of connecting the big set pieces with people you care about even if yeah. you've only met them briefly would you agree 
Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's probably one of the things that I've been missing so much about the first four seasons. Because the first four seasons had characters, and to some extent after that too, but the first four seasons in particular have not been topped for me. Because they had characters that you really connected with, matched with fun stories, and everything tied together really well. There was hardly any duds for me. Some people didn't like an epi- episodes here and there. And I was really happy with the first four seasons. And yeah. so far, even though I still like the show, uh, of course, I'm still watching it. I'm doing a podcast about it. I still right. really like the show. I'm, I'm just waiting for something to get back to how the first four seasons felt for me. And they haven't reached that yet. Yeah. As much as I've liked Matt Smith and Peter Capaldi and a lot of the writing that came after the first four seasons, they haven't really matched that. And that's probably why. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <sighs> okay. All right. So then they... Uh, well, so overall, did you like having Jack Harkness back? Did you think that was fun? Yeah, it was nice to see somebody from much earlier in the series again. I really like when we get characters who've been on the show in the past and have been gone for a long enough time that it's really fun to see them again. I, a lot of people like to criticize that as, like, I don't know, fan bait or whatever, but like... I think it makes the show more fun. And if you have a good story to tell with them, I say do it. It doesn't matter how much fan service it is. Uh I I think it's fun. And I liked how they used him and I liked having him back. Yeah. So then they end up in the, they with the TARDIS in Jack's office, Jack Robertson's office. And uh, the, uh, They've blocked his phone lines. He can't call security. He claims that the Daleks are run by AIs, not aliens. And uh, well, he's he, Arthur now. And, now. <laughs> yeah. And so then the Daleks begin exterminating people, including the Prime Minister. She's taken out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which well, was they, too bad. They, sort of, they escaped their pods. And that, that was another thing that I felt like they could have done a better job of explaining. Like, they all teleport out of there and into the pods. And that just seemed like another very convenient plot device that they just wrote into the story. And like I said at the beginning, at this point it's sort of so convoluted that I'm not, I'm not going to pick over that too much. But a few years ago, if they had done something like this, I would have been like, why didn't you explain this better? But after the finale, it's like, they're just going to do whatever they want. So it's, it's, I don't want to say it's a cartoon, but it's sort of in that same vein where like, it's just whatever you want it to be. And they just needed the Daleks to be Daleks again. So, well, they teleported out of their tanks and now they're into the Dalek shells. (laughs) So they're Daleks now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a death squad of Daleks and, uh, then there's the reconnaissance Daleks, and the because they have a certain degree of human DNA, these new Daleks, the the real Daleks don't consider them pure Daleks. And so well, they it's probably just the fact that they were cloned, I, uh-huh. and well, it was revealed that the Daleks were fed humans. So maybe that's where the human DNA came. I don't know. Yeah. A lot of this, it seemed very similar to things that have happened before on the show. And not that I'm complaining too much because I did in the end, I did enjoy the episode, but a lot of this is stuff we kind of have seen before to the point where when, when the doctor decided her plan, like she put out this call that eventually got to the real Daleks. I was like, I know exactly what she's doing. She's going to weaponize the Daleks obsession with purity against these new clone Daleks. And that's exactly what happened. 
Yeah, that's because we've kind of seen this before in uh, in previous episodes. Yeah, she sends out a Dalek reconnaissance signal. <laughs> that's what they called it in the on the Wikipedia, and uh, and so that yeah they 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 have to have the pure Daleks, and mm-hmm. then the Doctor tricks them into going into the wrong TARDIS, and she's able to destroy she's able to destroy them. I mean, this is, you have also Rob Robertson. He, he's, he's talking all about winning. And I mean, that's all that kind of stuff is very Trumpian. He's, he, he goes and he's like, wants to betray the human race to, I don't really know what his line of thinking there was. That was another thing where it felt very cartoonish because mm-hmm. he decides that he's going to abandon the doctor and go join the Daleks for some reason. And th- this is this well, just he has to be on the side of winning, is. and that's like winning for him or something like that. Yeah, but like with the Daleks, he would think that even with the short amount of time that he's seen with them, you would know that there's no winning with the Daleks. It just made it to me. It made no sense to have him suddenly jump ship and run off and join the Daleks because it's obvious that they're going to kill him eventually, even though that's not what ended up happening. It almost happened and it would have happened if they, if they hadn't rescued him, which if it were me, I would have just let the Daleks have him. Yeah. <laughs> he this, he can have it. Right. Yeah. And so then Jack decides to stay on earth. He's not going to go away. And then we kind of get our, sort of ending once the Daleks are destroyed and that's in the fake TARDIS and uh, Ryan chooses to stay uh, because he thinks he can help more uh, uh, in the current times Uh, and uh, and then Graham wants to be with his grandson so he decides to stay we we knew that the both those actors were leaving Mm -hmm. at least I think every pretty much everyone did and, and I kind of the, prefer that they did it this way rather than having them die because mm-hmm. this kind of gives them a window to come back, which hopefully they will come back maybe for like a guest appearance in a, in the next season. Maybe they'll be there for an episode. Oh, that'd which, be fun. Which I prefer over having them die a tragic je- death just because they wanted to get rid of the actors or whatever. Right. I, I'm glad uh, there's she- a chance they could come back. So she gives them a this the psychic paper, mm-hmm. and which they had previously talked about in the in the episode, wishing that they had some to help mm-hmm. them get around more. Yeah. So then the doctor and Yaz they're going to continue together, and uh, they you see you also see Ryan trying to ride a bike again. I forget what condition he has that makes him. Not able to do that. Do you remember why he struggles? I don't remember the name of it. I, I yeah. know there was a specific name for it, and I don't remember what it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I, I I think it's kind of a shame that they're gonna that they announced they announced a new companion, uh, played by an actor named John. You fill me in. I missed this. <laughs> oh, you didn't see it? No. Yeah. <laughs> So they announced that there's going to be a new companion uh, played by an actor named John Bishop and uh, that I guess he is known for his comedies. Um, he was saying that was Jodie Whittaker was done as well. She was more known for comedy, but um, uh, it's uh, let's see if it says anything in the article. Yeah, they had uh, don't miss it. Uh, coming up the announcement of the new companion uh and they showed him and see if this article says much about him Uh, it says here uh that it's being played by john bishop the scene introducing the bishop sees him loading items into a truck while another man reads to him his horoscope for the new year noting it includes surprises the color blue and the number 13, obviously that, that has to do with, uh, with Dr. Doctor. Yeah. 13 doctor. And so there's going to be two companions 
with the doctor, which I think is a little bit of a shame. I think it could have been fun with just this doctor and, and Yaz, just the two of them mm-hmm. zipping around the, uh, the galaxy. But um, it was now time. Uh, it says the 54 year old Bishop is a stand up comedian and actor who has appeared in skins and more recently fearless. I feel like I've heard of that fearless show. So yeah, we're going to have a new companion coming up. As long as it's handled well, I don't mind that there's multiple companions. I guess the thing for me is they had three companions and they didn't handle them well enough that I even feel that sad that Ryan and Graham have left. <laughs> like if they had, if they had given them better character development, I would be more emotional of, of over the fact that they're going to be leaving. And I don't care that much. I like them enough that I wouldn't mind seeing them come back, but I, I don't have enough of a connection to them for it to matter too much. Right. Yeah. Like if Yaz had been the one leaving, I don't think I would care as much. I would, it's, it all just seems like a missed opportunity because they could have given them more character development. And if they're going to write somebody out, I guess Ryan and Graham have had the most character development, even just their very first episode with all the stuff with Graham's wife, Ryan's grandmother, that that was the most has most character development they got through most of the series. That's I think true. that's true. So yeah, we've gotten a little bit about Yaz uh, and her family, and uh, the, the, I think more about Yaz's grandmother than Yaz herself. I was just going to say that that was one of the best episodes. Yes, of the season though, but yeah. But yeah. There was the episode where um there was that there was the one episode with her family and the trash and everything. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Was that was that <laughs> and the her spider sister? One? Was that the same episode with the spider? I can't remember. I can't remember. <laughs> it's so bad. Sorry, guys. Um, it's, been, yeah. it's been so long. I, I think it I was. Have, normally, I would have rewatched these. Like, I would have, with previous seasons, like years ago with the original Doctor Who, I watched them myself. I rewatched them. I watched them with my brother. I watched them with my cousin. I watched them with my other cousin. And I haven't rewatched these at all. Yeah. I watched them the one time to record these podcasts with you and that's it so that tells you how much they've stuck with me and how much i've loved them i have i haven't really because i haven't rewatched them i probably will eventually because someday i might catch up with my cousins but i don't know i just it just seems like it it just seems like it could have been fun having two women if you're going to embrace having a female doctor, it seems like it could have been fun having two women, you know, yeah. as the lead for this, for this next season. So now that it's not, that seems like a little bit of a, a missed opportunity, but maybe he's super fun and hilarious. So, you know, we'll see what he ends up doing, but do you know when we're going to get the next season? No, I don't know. Have no, they even announced either. it? um i don't think they No, been. we just know 2021 sometime i think well at least we don't have to wait in a whole another year <laughs> um i wonder how much has been recorded because with the pandemic and everything everything has been thrown off so i don't know how much they've even recorded for the next season yeah i don't know i mean i actually i maybe it's not even going to be 2021 i don't know when we're going to get the new new season but if any of you listening know let us know but uh but there we go so that is the revolution of the daleks i thought the most the stuff with the trump wannabe jack robertson wasn't that great but i i still enjoyed spending time with the companions and the doctor and uh, overall, it was just a nice kind of breakup of uh, of all the uh, holiday programming and everything like that. To have a little bit of Doctor Who uh, mm-hmm. was fun. Yeah, and I I feel mostly the same way. I did really enjoy this episode, especially like the beginning stuff, like 
j- the stuff in the jail. That just felt very classic Doctor Who to me. Yeah. And it just, I want it just more had a that. lighter, fun spirit than uh, than what we've had for a while, and it was just enjoyable. Yeah, it has been kind of a downer recently. That's probably why I haven't felt compelled to revisit it. Really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I I I want more fun, and I hope the next one will be more fun too. Yeah, definitely. Well, very good. Let us know if you're listening what you thought of the episode of the New Year special. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section or on Twitter. And Jonathan, how can people find you? You can find me pretty much anywhere at John J North, and I have podcasts on Anchor. I've got iHeart Movies which is pretty much anything. I'll talk about any movies, even some TV and mm-hmm. every version ever, which is me exploring every version ever of a whole bunch of different classic literature. Every time it's been remade in a different movie or TV version, I'm trying to talk about it. Yeah, definitely. Y'all should check that out. I'll have all the links for that in the description and you can find me at Rachel's reviews, all over social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out and make sure you're following the homeworks podcast with lots of good stuff going on over there as well. And thanks so much. And we'll, uh, and, and well, we also have our patron group, which is a lot of fun and we have our merch store. So check that out and uh, we'll uh, talk to you all later. Bye everyone. Bye.